Hi everybody and welcome to Plastic Models by a Regular Dude. Today I am uh, in between some projects and stuff. I'm waiting for some primer to dry and that kind of thing. So I figured I would do a little uh, box thing here. Um, I announced uh, a little earlier this month that uh, I'm doing a buddy build with our Swedish friend Peter Person. And um, I figured I would, since we're just a few days away from November 1st, which is our start date, I would crack open the box and uh, take a look at what is inside of it. So I'm really dying to open this thing up. It is the Bronco Sturmgeschutz 3 Ausführung E. I don't know how to say E in German, sorry. Um, pretty neat kit. Uh, looks like it's going to be a good one. I built one uh, Bronco kit before being the Stag Hound and I really really enjoyed that kit. It had some really tiny parts and really small connection points and stuff like that but it was a really nice kit and it was a lot of fun to build. So um, you know Peter said something about it <clears throat> earlier in the year because he got the kit and uh, asked me if I'd want to do a buddy build with him and I said sure so I got it we decided on November 1st so that's what we're gonna do so in preparation for that I'm gonna open this thing up just so we can take a look and see what's inside now keep in mind I am NOT a Stug expert at all zero I know there's Stug 3's Stug 4's but I don't really uh, I don't know the ins and outs of the different versions and stuff like that. I totally have to rely off the kit, uh, period. So if there's inaccuracies, I'm not aware of them. And I wouldn't know one if I saw it. So I'm just going to talk about the quality of the kit, the way things look. So because I plan on doing, you know, since I'm doing this buddy build, I'm going to video, uh, do a video log of it. Um, I'll just make it kind of a review thing because I have I didn't see any reviews of this particular kit on YouTube anywhere and I could have missed them. It doesn't seem to be doesn't seem to be much online either. So um, I'll do like I usually do. I'll talk about you know things that might not fit right or things that may not you know work like they should, um, or just say hey, this is going together great, no problems. So anyway, that's the plan. So let us take a look and see what's inside the box. All right, here's the box. Um, you know, fairly decent artwork. Uh, let's see, it is kit number CB35118, World War II German assault gun, Sturmgeschutz 3 Ausführung E. It's the KFZ 142 by Bronco. Um, usual box stuff. Some CAD drawings, photo etch parts with a high quality decal. Cool. Uh, that's pretty much it. It shows the side here. Two different uh, two different versions it looks like. Um, I'm going to get with old, uh, old Peter and see which version he wants to do. And we'll, uh, we'll take it from there. But that's that. Nice glossy box. contents of the box uh, well, this wasn't in my last one so this is kind of cool a little fold out uh, um, little fold out deal here pretty cool can't read very much of it because as you can see it is not in English and that's about all I can read oh there's some English right there Bronco model introduction Established in November 2004. That's interesting. But anyway, there's a few of their models. A few more. So, um, then we got a lot of plastic here. I'll open the bags here off camera in just a minute um, and take a look at the contents. Get down to the bottom here. Let's see what we got. Um, instructions, which is a nice, fully glossy booklet here. 
and oh looky here artwork suitable for framing it's the box art but just like a print of it by itself so that, that's kind of cool you know if you wanted to hang that up in your hobby room or whatever so we'll take a look at the instructions first let's see what we got going on here I'm not going to go over them in detail because instructions are pretty boring and going off of past experience the, the instructions I've used um, on that other kit they I can't remember any problems so uh, it looks like a pretty good deal uh, just parts layout like typical models um, start with the uh, the wheels suspension all that kind of business and then it jumps up to making internal so we got the gun gun assembly all the upper hatches just you know regular old instructions I, I do like the fact that it's on this high quality paper and it's color I mean it doesn't really matter I guess in the long run because you know instructions are instructions but it is kind of cool it is kind of neat that they uh, they take the they take the effort to make some really nice looking instructions and there are the two the two versions so we've got Sturmgeschutz Abteilung 177 Eastern Front Russian 1941 and then Abteilung Aptalum 197 Eastern Front 1942 so um, both of them are Russian front vehicles and they look pretty much the same except for the uh, the markings so um, I don't know what you're going to do so I'm going to discuss it further with old Peter and see what the oh hey looky there we got one more sorry early version German 1941 that is very basic it looks like the only markings are the uh, Balkan Kreutz so nice instructions so what I'm gonna do is uh, cut these bags open real quick so you don't have to watch me do that okay so first we've got sprue A um, the upper hull portion fenders and gun parts that kind of thing and uh, they look very good nice texture uh, anti-skid or diamond plate texture whatever it is on the on the fenders hinges look really nice real good molding <coughs> hinge detail with the uh, rivets or bolts or whatever's holding it together so that all looks really good. Weird color. I haven't seen a color like that in a long time. Strange yellowish color. <clears throat> Usually it's more of a tan. So that was sprue A. I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail on this stuff because, you know, like I said, I don't know if things are accurate or not. I'm just gonna talk about the quality. And you know it looks really good, you know, pretty much modern quality on any, just about any, almost any brand of kit is going to be decent. But see stuff like this, that's really nice, nice detail. Um, toe tow cable ends those are nice there doesn't seem to be much as far as the parting line there I mean it's kind of hard to see on this kind of plastic and at this angle but it doesn't feel like there's much there so cleanup should be pretty decent all looks good looks like we got the uh, the guard that goes around the breach the breach itself <clears throat> and boy do I hate breaches like that and two part breaches. I guess there's no other way to do it though. But it looks good. So that's sprue B. Then we have 
have two C sprues. So we've got C A and C B. Um, <coughs> C A road wheels, final drive cover, uh, return rollers, antennas, our antenna there. Um, then we have the uh, drive sprocket. Looks like two different drive sprockets. This one's smooth in the middle. This one is got detail, so it just bolts and stuff. Um, suspension parts and the idlers. Again, all nicely molded. Suspension. Nice. Um, so then we have another C sprue, which is the same, but it also has the addition of CE, which is uh, more, looks like hull detail. <coughs> Small hatches. Looks like two types of the same hatch. This one's got some some kind of little flap detail on it. Be interesting to see in the instructions what this is for. And then these parts here, superstructure parts maybe? I'm not sure, but it's got some nice weld detail along these edges. And it's nice to note that the um, sprue gates, the sprue attachment points on these parts is molded to the bottom edge instead of on the side so any detail like any weld detail or anything along the edge is not going to be destroyed when you cut this off and clean it up that is something that really uh, impresses me on models is when they do that kind of thing now this part right here I'm not sure if it's supposed to be all twisty and bendy like that so I'll have to look and see what that is because it's looking pretty bowed up so that's the other C sprue. Then we have the upper superstructure. And I kind of like the fact that um, it's one piece like this. Just will make it nice. Uh, less parts to have to worry about aligning. Nice screw detail. Nice hinge detail. Weld beads there where the uh, this plate interlocks with the side plate. Same there, so that's nice. Nice weld detail around here. Another nice thing <clears throat> on some kits, weld detail can be destroyed when you're gluing parts together. So it's kind of it's got a little bit of rough texture too. It's not perfectly smooth, so that's nice. Sides are pretty smooth, but so that's the upper part. Then we got the lower hull here, which this is nice. All that crazy detail on the bottom looks really good. Now here's something interesting. These little parts here are bent. These have been damaged. So I'm going to have to be very careful flexing them back into place. Now they just look like some kind of stops or something. doesn't look structural. So I can bend them in place and they should be okay. But those are very, very finely detailed finely molded parts really thin and uh, they were bent see I was able to fix it so that's okay so watch for that if you're building this kit but the details really good again nice weld detail will be interesting to see how well this front plate fits on here hopefully not leaving any gaps so nice whole tub there then we have sprue ka which is the tools uh it's weird two bolt cutters two shovels maybe it's different yeah they're different styles yeah different kinds of mounting brackets it looks like kind of an open type here and then there's just the ends are bare there uh two different Shovel, <clears throat> shovel mounts. This one's just a strap. This one's more of a total tip cover. <clears throat> a couple of fire extinguishers. Pick. So, 
Nice looking there, a couple clear parts. I'm going to guess headlights. Uh, then we have this ultra tiny. I didn't even take these out of the bag. Hopefully you can see there. They uh, look like wing nut. Uh, wing nuts. Very, very small. Some tow cable all wound up, which looks pretty nice. I like this copper tow cable. I'll just have to make sure I twist it up and make sure it's tight. It doesn't have weird flat spots in it or anything. And then we have the tracks. Now there's a whole bag of this right here. And these are the tracks. So in looking at them, there are no ejector pin marks. So that is really good. So cleanup on these is going to be really easy. Careful cutting on that flat spot there. Maybe a little bit of sanding and then carefully cutting right here and here and making sure that is sanded round. Now as you can see that is some pretty stinking delicate looking stuff but it looks really good. No mold lines anywhere so these I don't think will be too hard to clean up and as you can see like I said there's a whole flipping bag of them. Now here's the part that's kind of scary. These are the pins for putting the tracks together. So I read somewhere I think, here there's, there's like a little bracket here, a guide where you line them up and you put these in. Now if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, but I think somebody said that you could, these are spaced so that you can basically, you know, if uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, say it's six, six lengths, you can cut six of these and insert them all at the same time on both sides. And you don't have to glue them, I don't think. And then you can cut the heads off because you'll just be dealing with this small piece like this. So I don't know. I'm going to have to look because these are supposed to be workable tracks. So I'm going to have to monkey around with that and see how that is going to work. So we got that. That's the tracks. And then the last bag is this the metal parts photo etch and decals. So we've got a metal barrel. Which that's really nice. Brass. Um, some hole parts here. Screens. Other such stuff. Nice little uh, bolt detail here on this. Uh, more photo edge here. Um, looks like lifting hooks. And uh, idler wheel detail. And this is a pretty hefty piece of metal here, so that's nice. It's not going to, these hooks won't look out of scale. It should look pretty good. Sometimes you get this stuff, it's just too thin. So that's the metal parts. And lastly, the huge decal sheet. There it is. That's the decal sheet. Looks pretty good. Everything seems to be in register, uh, mostly. These small Balkan Balkan, uh, Balkan Kreutz there is not in register. Seems to be the black seems to be shifted up and that way a little bit. So may have to look at some other decals. These look okay, and these look okay because you know obviously it's not two parts. So we'll see. So that is contents of the Stug 3 for the Brett and Peter buddy build. So hopefully Peter you have seen this video and you will be inspired to do a box cracking open of your own and then come November 1st we can get started building this thing. So again I'm really looking forward to this. I think it's going to be a lot of fun and uh you know, I, I tend to 
like buddy builds these days more than more so than group builds. Uh, for some reason, I just feel a lot of pressure with group builds. So anyway, that's it. That's the contents, the inbox review portion of the overall build review or build log and buddy build with Peter. So. Thanks for watching everybody. Hopefully I didn't bore you too much. Looking at stuff in boxes can be rather boring at times, but hey, I felt it my duty since uh, I haven't seen too much of that on the old uh, interweb. So thanks for watching. Questions, comments below, and I will see you all next time.